welcome to episode, is this episode two? Up oh, season two. It is, isn't it? Yeah, welcome to episode two of season two of the On Studio Sessions podcast. Joining me this week are two absolute local legends, two legends in the field, um, Horrick <laughs> Stevens and Leo Moran. Lads, how are you doing? I, I thought we were on Netflix there, only what, season two, episode one, whatever. Yeah, I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna leave out the season from now on. It's just gonna be episode two, but some other time, huh? Some other time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're very welcome. Verma. Thanks for coming out. <laughs> Thanks for having us in strange times. Still, out. Um, I don't know how I don't know how this is going to go, but sure, we'll chance it and see how it goes. I don't plan anything out. Mam said you should definitely plan this one. I said. I might and I might not. I'll see how it goes. Um, so we'll chat for a little while and then we'll change things up and you might play a few tunes for us at the Absolutely. end. Absolutely. And uh, we'll try and get it done ASAP. But um, how have you been, I suppose, through lockdown? What have you been up to? Have you been up to anything much? Or? I've planted a few spuds. I went to the bog. Yeah. And I got down, got my feet in the ground and it was very good. Sure, it's the best thing to do is get out of the house anyway. Yeah. You know? Have you been playing any music? You told me this was the first time you've been together in three months, is it, or something? Yeah, we we had just started. Actually, about two days before lockdown, we we did a Facebook Live thing. Yeah, I remember that. And then everything got locked down, and then the whole uh, internet seemed to get saturated by the same kind of thing. Yeah. And then we had to separate anyway, so. Yeah. We didn't do anything since. Didn't do anything since. So this is like your, your reunion almost. Yeah. <laughs> It knows, it's like going to a gig, it's nice. Yeah, yeah, that's what Leo said yesterday. I was like, geez, that's kind of, it's nice, I suppose, yeah. So you'd be yeah. playing, yeah, so you'd even get to play a bit of music then later on. But um, I don't really know where to go because it's just, I don't know. It's, in, it's so cool having the two of you here, first of all. I never thought that the two of you would be out here. Well, it's very interesting to, to see what you're up to with, with uh, the, the studio and with the podcast. And... I think I'm up to too much at this point. I'm up to my eyeballs. That's what I'm up to. <laughs> Myself and Sean. Poor Sean's been working, I don't know, until Sean is the, Sean is the, hidden, the hidden technical genius. Yeah, Sean is the man you behind the You have to explain who he is and what's going on. Sean, Sean McElroy. Sean, you can explain yourself, Sean. <laughs> you didn't give him a mic. You'll have to do it. Sean has been... I've been friends with Sean for years and then... We kind of, I went to college and Sean was doing his own thing and I hadn't been talking to him. And then I said, Sean, will you come over? And I, I told him I was, I'd filmed the first season all by myself inside, like in the small room. And I was like, okay, season two now, I want to do it properly the way I had originally intended to do it, you know? So I got on to Sean. I was like, Sean, I have a bit of a proposition for you. And he's like, okay, go on. So I told him then, I was like, I want to do this this way. And he, you're the man to do it with all the cameras or whatever. And he said, sound. And then I said, yeah, but I also want you for another podcast as well. And he was like, Right, <laughs> so he get, Sean has been here, I think, three times a week for the last two weeks, I think. But we're get, we're getting through it. He's a genius. Absolutely, you've seen the, you've seen the videos and stuff that he's been doing. They're absolutely brilliant. So thanks, Sean. <laughs> and what about this new single, Wise? The Oh Hide, Hide with Owen Mullins. Who's the girl singing? Owen Mullins. You know Davy Mullins, the bike shop. Yes, his son. Oh, very yeah. good. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's. It's uh, it was a re- so he brought out that song on Spotify uh, last year I think or two years ago, and uh, it was really cool too. And I was sitting in there one day and I was making some of my own music, and then I was getting sick that I couldn't come up with, you know, come up with some bass part or something. Said so right, I'm going to take a break and listen to something else completely, and um, I started listening to that tune. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I wonder could I do something with that? So I went onto YouTube and downloaded the song, and threw it into uh, into Logic. And put some drums on it. And I was like, oh, that sounds kind of cool. So I sent it to Owen and I was like, Owen, you, he goes, you need to finish that. It's like, okay, grand. So I uh, spent a day at it then and finished it. And that's that's what it came out like. <laughs> so I'm pretty proud of it. It was cool. I sent it to Gold Bay FM there. So I'm waiting for them to start playing it on the radio and stuff. But yeah, it was uh, it's a cool little tune. Yeah, yeah. There's more to come. I have a few more remixes that I've been working on with other people as well. But they'll be coming shortly in time. But uh, yeah, that was the story behind that. <laughs> Did you listen to it? I did. What do you think of it? I listened to it on TikTok and it cut off after the vote. Oh, yeah. There's only, yeah there's only, so a TikTok only gives you about 15 or 30 seconds, depending on how long the video is. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's cool. It's cool. Well, that's, um, that's one of the things really that's interesting about these times is that your generation has a whole load of new talent yeah. locally coming around. And it's just come out of nowhere. Hasn't yeah. It? And you're going to be 
You, you, you won't have any problem filling these seats for the next while anyway. I don't think so. I don't think so. It's, it's, it's crazy, like, the amount of talent that's, that's come out. That's why I started the podcast in the first place, because it's just, like, all these young artists around you. Now, I'm like, okay, we're probably... That's you and me, Leo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. No offence to Jamie McIntyre now, but we're probably nearly sick of hearing Jamie McIntyre and hearing, you know, Al <laughs> Kelly and Owen Mullins. There's so many of these new artists that have just came out of the woodwork, like, all of a sudden. And... Um, You've been to Fuse a few times, haven't you? Yeah. Fuse is great. Yes. Fair play to Julie McHugh there. You'd have she's... to get a new venue though, Mill. You can't get a Yeah, you can't get a shoe. We'd have to get a lift. It's a, that's in, a serious in Canada. problem, I realized. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it is. Because it's only even but even for us, lugging gear up the stairs and everything, like there was nights there we had to bring subwoofers, like eighteen inch subwoofers up the stairs to get them up there, like whatever. So I think definitely when we come back we'll probably look at changing the downstairs changing venue. The downstairs venue. It might be too small. In the back though. It might be too small. You like this room, you can. That's true. It expands. Be more intimate though. It expands. You wouldn't know now when the way things go back. What way things are going to go back? Like yeah, it's mm. a bit early yet for it's scheming. Heaven, yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It's 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 weird. But uh, yeah, there's loads of new artists. What's her name? Um, Joanna Lane. Yes. Incredible, incredible is, yeah. class voice on her. Like I've, I didn't even know she could sing. I, I the only way I knew Alana or Joanna was from just seeing her around town, and I never got the vibe of her that she was an artist. Like you know. And then she came to fuse with Alana Mullins and the two of them sang that duet. And Jesus, it blew me away. Like, it's yeah. crazy. I couldn't get over it. She's such a cool voice. Yeah, and then she sang her first ever original song. Yeah. On stage. And yeah. what an amazingly accomplished performance that yeah, was. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? It was perfect. Like, it was perfect. It was, uh, it's mad. There's so many other artists then as well. Young lads, Lennon Doyle. Um, there's Ellen Kane. She's coming onto the scene now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Loads, there's loads of them, loads of them. Hopefully, yeah. we can get them all on in time. Very healthy and creative, brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're all different. No, everybody, like, there's nobody trying to be like somebody else either. No, you know, they're all very unique, which is which is what I like. But at the same time, you're never going to get people that were the same as like ye. Oh, no, thank God. <laughs> but, but do you know what I mean? So, like, every everybody that's come along has been unique in a way, for out of tune anyway, has been very unique. There's no, there is no bar, like, art, no band that has been the same. Even if you look at like New Beast. You know, Mixer's Band. Yeah, that's very different. That's very different, but it's still been well taken to, you know? Yeah. So it's 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 a weird one, but it's cool at the same time. Oh, absolutely. Really cool. Um, anyhow, can I go back to the start, Porik, for you? When did music first come into the equation <laughs> for you? I remember being maybe three years old and sitting in the kitchen in the middle of summer and, and, and hearing the sound of the radio. Yeah. And, and just being... I was left alone for a few minutes in a quiet room. Yeah. And the radio was on. And, and there was an orchestra playing on the radio. Yeah. And, and I just tuned into this. And I, uh, I've loved music ever since then. Just fascinated by it. Exactly. So then, were, were, you, were you always a musician? Was music always your thing? Because a lot of people don't know how... Porrick Stevens is known for writing music and having yeah. unbelievable songs yeah. that he's written but nobody knows how where Porrick came from you know what I mean so how did like how when did songwriting come into things for you or how did that start well, or? I, I'm, I, have, I have no sense of pitch I'm not uh, you know I'm very uh, uh, I'm a little musically really and I okay. was but I was I was I, I as a teenager in, in secondary school I copped on that I could my rhythm was okay. I could play. I could play the drums yeah. easily. So I, I did that for a while, and I, and I joined a band as soon as I left school. The Problems. Okay. We played in the youth club in Chilmer. It was it was brilliant to be on stage and yeah. to be playing. And I I played the drums for about ten years, and then I ended up. I was living in London. I was in a heartbroken, isolated state, and I and my brother arrived with, with my old guitar. Mm that he just bought for 20 quid in a junk shop. Yeah. And, and he showed me a couple of chords and I, I tried to write a song and it, I succeeded in making a couple of lines that sounded okay and I, I, I started doing that then. But yeah. I'm, I'm really a drummer. I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a musician like Leo is. I can't hear, I can't copy something that I hear musically. Mm. That's cool. That's interesting. I guarantee you there's about Hundred people out there that didn't know that story, like that's really well, good. I'd say probably more than a hundred. Oh, definitely more, yeah, yeah. But um, 
you know what fascinates me? You know what I love? You know the guitar that you have? Yes. The white, is it a white guitar? It's an old... Uh, it's like a, it, you know, it looks like a Gretsch. You know, the, the big Gretsch guitars. Yeah. It's an arch tough guitar. We, we, we look at it in a while. When, 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 oh, have you got a witcher? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yes, I, do, yeah. <laughs> I love that guitar so I'll much. I'll tell you the story about that guitar. My brother Joe was, he was a great man for building guitars and fiddles and, and the first instrument he got was a mandolin and the first thing he did was take it apart to see how it was built. Yeah. That, you know, he, and he found this guitar in a junk shop in Willesden in London. Yeah. And he said, there's a nice neck on that old thing. I can take that neck off and build a guitar around it. Around it. And uh, he, he gave it to me for, for a while. It just was kind of a loan. And mm. I started, I learned to play on that guitar and that was in the middle of the 1970s sometime. Mm. And I've been playing it ever since. Oh, it's class. It's just, you can, it's just you... got to sound better. The better I've got, it's got to sound better. Yeah, it's grown with you, like. And the story that went with it from the man in the junk shop yeah. was that it had belonged to the guitar player in the BBC Jazz Orchestra. And you can see that it was played all up the neck. It was played by somebody who knew how to play guitar, not just three chords. That's that's so cool. Yeah. I'm grinning ear to ear. I'm like a child at Christmas here. That's so cool. Because every time I've seen that guitar, be it on like a cover of, of some art or something that you have or on Facebook, it's always like, I wonder where that came from. Because it's, you can tell by looking at the guitar. It's like <laughs> that guitar is associated with Paul Stevens' music. Do you get what I'm saying to you? That kind of music. Yeah. And it's easy to make that connection. But then you said it's from a, a jazz orchestra, which is just yeah, and then I learned I, I I was kind of um, I then I got a found a guitar in a dustbin, and I fixed that up with an electric guitar and I had two guitars yeah and I wasn't you know I wasn't really uh, confident in my ability of playing the guitar and this guy came along he was a brilliant guitar player from Donegal a um, gypsy jazz guitar player yeah and uh, he didn't have any instrument so I said here follow this. And I lent it to him and he went off to cross, cross the city where he was living and I, a few weeks later I had to go looking for him because he, didn't, he hadn't brought it back. Yeah. And he'd, he'd scraped off all the, the uh, varnish and all the finish of the guitar in the front of it. So, I, so that's why it's white. It, it, was, it was originally a sunburst guitar. Okay. And this, this fool had... <laughs> <laughs> uh, scraped off the finish on it. Yeah. That's class. That's, that's so cool. That's blowing my mind now. That's mad. <laughs> what about you, Leo? When did you get your first guitar? I was 15. I went up to Chivago Records. was in this shopping centre in Galway at the time and I bought a guitar. It was called a Kyoto. Yeah. I think it's a city in Japan. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it was £26. I remember bringing it home in the bus. A real stink, humid, wet... Saturday in the middle of winter. Yeah. I was sweating and the bus was packed and the, the, the box was like a coffin and it was in everybody's way. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was good. To work. Yeah. It was good to la learn on. But one of the things I think about people buying guitars for kids is very often we think, oh, and, and I did the same for myself. I get a cheap guitar and see how I get on. Mm. But ironically, like cheap guitars are difficult to play. So really, um, kids probably deserve something a little bit better just, just to encourage them because yeah. sometimes people mightn't get over the original hurl of your fingers hurting. Yeah. And your fingers hurt more on a cheap guitar. Yeah, they do, yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's, a thing, it's a thing worth uh, considering, I think, if kids want to start playing or if anybody wants to start playing, maybe get it. You can still get a cheap guitar, but get one that's maybe reasonably easy to play mm. yeah that's actually interesting because I know the first guitar I got was a little um, it was a nylon string classical guitar and it was absolutely it was impossible to learn on that like yeah. and then now when I started buying you know proper guitars and stuff and looking back on it like the frets are unevenly spaced and it's uh, you know yeah. so I suppose it, does, it is worth spending the proper money and stuff well you know? I, I, I might pick up a guitar kids are learning on now and I'd say I can't play that can't play it. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, yeah 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 or the action will be all off or yeah, something won't yeah. be right. Like, and then, see, there's two sides to that, though, because then you can be like, oh, well, if you learned how to play on a really hard guitar, then 
<laughs> another one should be easy to play you know but I suppose that's not the case like either you know well I, I'd be just afraid you wouldn't get to the next yeah, the you'd next step you think oh god it's too hard well, that's well, what happened when you're to starting me. you don't know that huh when, before you've ever had a guitar you don't know what a good guitar is that's true no. you're just oh my god I've got this guitar I've got a guitar yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. That was like, that's what happened to me when I got my own. I got my own for Christmas years ago. I was a young lad and I played it for about 10 minutes and left it in the corner. Just, yeah, yeah. tuned it up and just messed around with it. Like, I didn't have any, you know, I was just plucking the strings, like, and I threw it in the corner and that was grand. And didn't touch it then for years. And I think when I got into secondary school, uh, Connie Burke was teaching us a bit about guitar. Mm. And that's when I took it out again and started playing again. But, like... Well, up until that point, I hadn't looked at it. But then when I came back, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to have to buy a proper guitar now. Because I'm in school, I'm going to, you know. So I bought a real guitar and then I uh, started learning on GarageBand on the Mac. And uh, taught you all the chords and all the finger shapes and everything. Little videos like that they had. And just learned that way, then learned guitar that way. And I was playing piano at the start before that. I was playing piano when I was seven. So now that helped as well, you know. So I think, I don't know, I, what... Do you think guitar is the first is hard first instrument to learn, or is it easy to learn on guitar? It's probably different for everybody, is it? I don't know. I, don't know. I think probably a, a mandolin or a ukulele might be a little bit easier because yeah. you have less less fingers to worry about. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, I oh, yeah I just I fo- I found the guitar difficult, but once it was once you get the hang of it, then your sound, you know. Mm. But, um, it's the old just your own your own. Uh, Ambition to learn to play music is, is probably the biggest yeah. thing, more than the instrument. Even. More than the like, instrument, yeah. 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 If you have the will to do something. The hunger to do it. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. That's true. That's true. So much wise words in this episode. Like, it's going to be quotes taken from this. Um, so, okay, we got, we got a bit of Porrick story. So, Leo, how did things start for you, music wise? Well, that was it. Now, we were about 15, and I was. I was 13 in 1977, so it was a brilliant time to be 13. <laughs> yeah. Because you're open to all kinds of music at yeah. that stage. And then the punk thing was ideal because it's uh, it was so exciting. Mm. And it also meant that you could have a go. You didn't have to be, you wouldn't be going to music lessons, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just do it like Yeah, so yeah. we started a band, um, myself and, and the McHugh brothers, Kyozer and Mouse. Yes. And around the same time, Blaze X had started. That's right. And uh, Auric was their manager, and he was writing a few songs with them as well. And we were writing songs, and I actually wanted to be the bass player, but Mouse bought a bass, and I thought that's grand. I'll get a bass, and we'll see who gets on. But the day Mouse bought the bass, he could play it. Yeah. <laughs> so that was the end of me playing the bass. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was just, you know, he's one of those where he didn't need any learning. Yeah. So then I thought I'll have to get a guitar. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's mad. You had a, you had a, a you were up on the stage with um, the Tomb Town Blats. Yeah, we did a uh, bit of miming. <laughs> did you ever hear that? The Tomb Town Blats? No. It's kind of based on the... The Boomtown Rats. Yes. Yeah. And there was something in the town hall. It was, um, well, do you know what there was? There was the Credit Union school quiz and they had a little, like, a uh, talent. Yeah. <laughs> Inverted commas talent spot, <laughs> at, you know, at the interval. Yeah. So, so we volunteered for that. Yeah. It was terrible. It was like we, we, um, finally school. Yeah. We were in sixth class and the lads, I think it was mostly cut out, um, cut out guitars, shapes yeah. of, of, in wood, you know, in timber. So we brought them up to do the gig. We, we didn't, I had never heard of a guitar strap. We didn't know you needed one of them. <laughs> so we, <laughs> we were on the stage with these very heavy <laughs> wooden cut out guitars <laughs> trying to hold them up. And mime, and then of course, who was it? Gilzer and and Mouse and I forget who else. But um, and of course we had we had a tape recorder, one of those old tape recorders with the battery operated tape recorder. Yeah, yeah. And cassette, a cassette player. Yeah, that's mad. And then there was a there was the <laughs> microphone. The microphone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was the sound system for us miming on stage. So not alone. Did we look ridiculous trying to hold up things that were very heavy? Yeah. And nobody could hear what we were doing either. So I, I'd say. So did you have a PA like? No. It was a PA for the school quiz like. And that was it. Yeah. He was going through that. Yeah. And I, this is like in 
70, uh, I don't know, 76, 77. So the PA month. wouldn't have been yeah. the kind of one you'd have now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's say. Yeah. So I'd, I'd love to see, if, you know, obviously there's no footage of it, but I'd say it wasn't... Uh, Say most people went to the toilet during <laughs> during the performance. <laughs> toilet break now, like. It made, um, it made a mark, though. I heard about it afterwards. Really, yeah? yeah. <laughs> but you've been doing the credit union quizzes ever since, haven't you? Or have you? No. No? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Have you been at a few of them, no? No. I like thought you, there was... There's you all, was you there were doing something lately with playing guitar lifts, I did. I did a, I did a round, a music round in the in the... Educate together. Okay. Quiz. You might be uh, pub maybe. quiz. You might be confusing it with that. I always thought there was something to do with the credit union quizzes, and I was like, I didn't know they still they still did them. Oh, they did, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 They let Leo maybe out. Of, they gave Leo the leave and let him out of tune. Yeah, <laughs> maybe not. Maybe I'm thinking of something completely different. I know you did the credit union song though. Oh yeah, that was a good laugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah we go crack one People like that. There was there a video for that as well, wasn't there? Was. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that was cool. That was really cool. We were up in the credit union one day as well. Playing it was, it was a good crack. Yeah, that's what I saw. That's well, what it was. The girls that's from the Mossy joined in. Yeah, that's you what said I it. Saw. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, what was I going to say? You mentioned okay, so this is kind of an interesting question now. Well, for me because I'm pure nerd. Like, so you were you said how you talked about the PA that time would be nothing like what we had now, right? So. A lot of your earlier albums, Porik, right, would have been recorded fairly early on. Like the late was the latest one you released was the news from the old country, isn't that right? We did once. I did one since at home. Uh, okay, recorded in, in my house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Home recordings, it's called. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's the way the way that's the way things are going now. Yeah. But um, the question basically is: is what like how have you seen technology change? <laughs> Since you know, like since you started recording music, how is how have you seen technology change? And are you like are you warm into the whole kind of digital side of it, or would you rather still be recording on analog? Like, do you know? I I, I was a kind of a. I'd never been in a studio until we went with Blaze X to Yeah. Uh, the first recording studio in the west of Ireland was in 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 Jal the Lady's Garage and Garage was about big as this for the two looms. Yeah. And that was a four track TAC three three four oh tape machine and a little twelve into two stage mixer and a few fifty eights. Yeah. And we recorded a Blaze X single on that and got record of the week on RT. <laughs> Class. That's mad. <laughs> that was nineteen eighty eighty one probably. Mm. And uh and then Kenny Leif went off and bought that same kind of equipment and set up his studio, yeah. first in his house, in one of the looms in his house in Bishop's Street. And, and he's, he's, the, he's moved on with the technology, as you know. Like yeah. You could talk about that better than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I listen to performances more than to sound. Yeah. You know? So I, I, I can't really judge between analogue yeah, yeah, yeah. I could tell you a bit about the PAs we started with. We had a, well, yeah, for real. We had a 30 watt uh, metal clad PA and uh, a mic like your show. Yeah. The skull mic. This boy, yeah, 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 yeah. And we had a little amplifier that was about five watts and they had two inputs. And there were f- three lads in the band who played the guitar, two <laughs> guitars and a bass. Right. So on our first gig, there was a guitar and a bass plugged into that little five watt amplifier. It was made by El Pico. Okay. And one twelve inch speaker and a thirty watt amplifier and a microphone mm. and a drum kit and that. The other guitar, uh, the um, the amplifier was on a chair in the, in, on the stage. Yeah. And the the third guitar lead was knotted to the arm. At Back at the chair, and it wasn't plugged in the chair. People loved it. I think my microphone is moving. Is it? Yeah, can you lift that up some of it, Sean? I can, um, I can do it, or do it but yourself. I don't yeah, want to yeah, make yeah, a noise, huh? Oh, no, pick it up, scan because I'll be able to cut it. I'll be able to cut it out. Um, that's mad. Uh, I think the way though, 
the way but the world has got a lot louder though that's the big yes, thing yes that's, that's the just difference. what I was going to yeah. say yeah like I think the minimum the maximum volume that you can have at a concert now is 110 dB dB SPL that's what you can have and if you're above that then you're just like it's just yeah. crazy loud like you know um, we learned all about that in college and I'm not going to go into that pure nerdy it's like you can only if you have um, loudness of 80 dB SPL you can only stick it for depending on the size of the room like you know stick it for a certain amount of time before you start getting hearing damage and stuff it's mad but um, yeah the way PAs are going now and stuff like that I don't know it's kind of getting too digital it's kind of sounding too it doesn't sound as real you know what I mean I don't like it I always try and I always try and make my live stuff sound really warm and sound you know more not amplified, but more kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It begins with an R. It's kind of, it's not amplifying the sound, but it's more kind of adding to it. Do you get what I mean? You know, so you're not making it louder. You're just kind of giving it a little push so yeah. that people can actually hear it. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I like the way PAs are going. I mean, sure, the technology is class, but it's getting a bit too digital. Like Even <laughs> autotune, I hate autotune. The fact that you can go in and change someone's change the pitch of someone's voice you know and sadly that's the way modern music is going now which is a pity so what I would say to young artists is don't be using autotune or any of that crack just keep recording until you get the take if you sound it might take about 30 or 40 takes but you get it like so let's never forget it yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, I loved news from the old country I thought that was absolutely class Leo was the producer yeah, I thought that was so. But the two E were re- that was that was like the two E, and then you had the Wildaways as well. Were involved a bit there, were they? Yes, I thought yeah. that was class. What are the Wildaways like to work with? Oh, the t- professional and and the the they have a they have a group dynamic for harmony, and and they work out things on the spot. Who's yeah. going to sing what? Class, and it it sounds a lovely blend of music. Mm. Yeah. Just, I- I'd uh, love the, to that, the, the listen like the listen to orchestras in their heads when they're walking around class that's deadly yeah some yeah. of the harmonies in that album were just incre- like incredible and then Prayer to St. Anthony oh my god what a tune that was class <laughs> I think that was that was all over too. that was everywhere for ages like such a good tune it's brilliant oh, thank you and the video was class good old well. Anthony huh good old Anthony good old Anthony yeah. his uh his feast day was last Sunday, I'm told. Oh, really? St. Anthony, yeah. St. Anthony, yeah. yeah. So, okay, you write an awful lot of music. I'm, I'm correct in saying that. Do you write much, do you write much music for other people? No, I just no. like music. <laughs> I just make up little songs. Yeah. And That's it, see whatever happens. See what happens. Yeah. What do you think of the tune beat? Amazing, amazing. The way it's taken off. Yeah. I think it's class. Yeah. I think it's really, really cool. And again, another great song. I play it every Saturday when I'm DJing. <laughs> it's brilliant. What version? The, I play the... What version is it? What was the first country version of it that came out? The first... Who was the first country singer to make a version of it? Stuart Miles, is it? Michael English. Michael English. That's the one. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> that's the one. That's the one people hear on yeah, Midwest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one I do play. And every like... Young and old will be up dancing. Sean will be up dancing to that, wouldn't you, Sean? He's <laughs> got a dancing feet. But you know what I love? When I announced yesterday that it was yourselves that were coming on, um, the amount of lads that text me saying, oh, two absolute legends. Young lads, my age, like, t- you couldn't have two better lads coming on, two absolute legends coming on. The fact that there's people my age that appreciate your music, Porrick, and appreciate, obviously appreciate the Soul Doctors and everything they've done, like... Yeah. Still to this day says an awful lot about your talent. Oh, well. <laughs> it does though. It says an awful there's lot about the music. It says a lot of talent from this town. Do you know what I mean? So I think that's something to be kind of like, oh yeah, that's pretty good. You're still having a lasting effect even to, to up to now, like you know. Can I plug our new website? Yeah. I chum. I chum. I saw this. Yeah. yeah. This, this is, tell me about this. It's, this is for everybody. Okay. To put up anybody who's making any kind of original music or. Content of any kind, uh, yeah. A place where that can go online, and we've got uh, a SoundCloud section. Well, we've put up a few of the albums, like the uh, songs from the Broken Wheel and the Shawband mm-hmm. albums, 
and whatever else, there's the space for people to put up stuff on that. Yeah. And it'd be great if it could become a community thing rather than then just all thing. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. I saw yeah. that. That's, that was really cool. I like that a lot. So if anybody's interested, I chum. Excuse me, I'm actually burping. Yeah, you know where to go, I chum. It's very cool. It's a very cool idea. It's like... Keela Finan did the web. Did she? The web yeah. design. Again, genius. He's a genius. Yeah, yeah. genius. Um, yeah, Facebook is great, but over time, Facebook can get very... It's gone in a minute, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. like you have something up there and all of a sudden then sure something gets flooded. <laughs> it's, you know, does you, you can't keep track of stuff on Facebook. And I find then sometimes, you know, you're trying to be, you, you probably you probably see it all the time with the two music estate page. Like, you're constantly, because the way things are promoted now is you have to almost be annoying people. You know what I mean? All the time for them to even pick up on something, you know? So, you're constantly posting and then you're wondering like, Jesus, am I annoying these people now or whatever. Yes, but, a thin line. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It's hard to know. It's hard to yeah. know what to do. But again, it's great to have a platform. That's why Fuse was great. Where Fuse was going because all these artists have a platform, you know? Yeah, and hopefully they'll all show up on iTunes now. Exactly. Yeah, I'm going to actually start pushing that now. Do. Um, I might actually do up a little ad for it. Do. Like a little vocal, like spoken word ad and just throw it into the podcasts and stuff. Brilliant. Get the word around. Because I don't know how many years it is now. It must be nearly 20 years that the Songs from the Broken Wheel compilation came out. That's right. And that was, for anyone that doesn't know, that was three a three CD collection of, I think it was 52 original songs from 52 different um, artists. Yeah. All local. Yeah. At the time. Mm. So... There must be another 52 since. There has to be, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, there was a few people asking me, um, would we, would would there be another like version of that on the cards? Do you know, to do like an updated version of it? Yeah, yeah. Um, That'd be brilliant. A few people had asked me that, and I was like, geez, that, that, I must ask Porik, and I never asked you, but that would be worth looking at. be cool. I wonder how many CDs would you get on it? <laughs> Probably be loads, like. Yeah, then it's... It'd be just great to have them archived. Wouldn't it? Have them yeah, somewhere, yeah. you know? Have them somewhere. I know people have old stuff as well. Yeah. Yeah. Like Mighty, Mighty says he has a song that he, he and Leo wrote in 1975 or something. Really? He just found the cassette. Class. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see what they have over Lidl there this week? Record players. I saw it rechargeable. Yeah, Bluetooth. <laughs> Deadly, like we got one for my neighbour there the other day, um, because we had a we had a record she had a record player that left over to the house and I was doing a job on it and I said, the the needle was gone in it so I said until I get a new needle we'll we'll buy her this new one so she can have it and then when I get the needle fixed on it we can she can have the two of them you know, but uh, vinyl is serious I mean like I didn't obviously I I grew up with cassettes and then CDs and then MP3 players, but. Vinyl to me is just absolutely fascinating, like, and uh, so we got this record player, and Dad has a huge collection of records, right? Crazy different, all different kinds of music, like, but it. What s- kinds? Huh? What kind of music? Oh, he has like everything from disco to country to, I think he might have some flipping ACDC in there. Loads of di- crazy stuff, like, but uh, there's something, there's something about. Did you ever release on vinyl? Yeah, the Soul Doctors used to release a certain they? amount. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I just, I, I want everything to go back to vinyl now. Cool. Yeah, well, it, it, it's definitely getting a lot more popular. Yeah, the tonal quality of it is incredible. Like, yeah, it's a different thing. It's completely like you're literally like, when you put down a record, you're touching the music. Like, mm. you know, it's crazy. There was something physical about. Holding the album in your hands, yeah, and because you're, hold, you're actually holding the sound waves, like yeah, and you had, you had to put the arm on very carefully, yeah. onto the, otherwise, you'll skip halfway into the song, like, yeah, I'll break, yeah, break the, the, break the stylus, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's just something crazy about it. Um, so there was, I had the reason I released that single, that new single that came out, was because there was another artist that had the same name as me, had Owen as well on Spotify and so anytime I was releasing music it was coming up under their profile and anytime anyone searched for my stuff it was coming you know what I mean so I said right I'm going to take everything down and um, rebrand it rebrand it as an, <laughs> under a new name 
So, but I think what I might do is, this, there's this thing I saw on Amazon, you can actually buy a vinyl cutter, your own home vinyl cutter, wow. and cut your own 12 inch. So, what I might do is, I might remaster them and cut them onto vinyl, and just keep them and not upload them at all, and just have them here, like, in vinyl. Oh, that'd be really cool. Oh, that, oh, that's, that's uh, counterintuitive. Huh? Make albums for nobody to listen to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I might, uh, might look into that and see. The other thing I have as well is a cassette You must have recorder. too much money. Huh? You must have too much too money. Too much money. That is quite the opposite. <laughs> Every last penny went into making this podcast happen. I think the last time I checked, there was 34 cent in my bank account. Tell your mother. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything else you want to enlighten me with before we take a break and sing a few tunes? Is there anything that I missed? I don't, because I want to keep it as broad as possible. I want to take out the information that people don't know. You know mm. what I mean? Because everybody knows, like, the Saw Doctors were incredible and they toured everywhere. And I remember I went to see the Saw Doctors in Castle Bar. <laughs> um, now the, you must have been awful young. I don't know how young I was. Was it in the tent? No, it was in the, it was in the, in t- the TF. In the TF, yeah. And, uh, or did you do one? Did you do a gig in Claire Mars? Yeah. Four, last... four years ago. That's the one I went to. Mm. That was pretty cool. You had Andreas to stack at that, hadn't you? Yes. Yeah. I went to that and that was like, oh my God, that, that was the, cause I've been to other concerts before and I was like, okay, yeah, this is what I want to do. I want to do live production and I want to do all that. And then I went to that concert and I heard the, sa- the sound of the cajon coming through the PA and I was like, oh my God, this is what I want to do. Like for, that was, that's what really set it in my mind that I want to do live audio. And it was an incredible concert. It was class. The electric guitar as well for Clear Ireland. Mm. The effects on that, like the way it filled the room, mm. all was just class. With Sam Mandel. Yeah, that was Mert, wasn't it? Was it Mert Whelan? Probably Ooh. Paul Keegan. Paul Keegan. Was it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. It was excellent. It was class. It was brilliant. Yeah, it, we were very lucky because technology got very good. Yeah. When we were doing most of our stuff, like yeah, like we started off and. 1980 Blaze X They're barely yeah, 100 watt PA hmm? 100 watt PA yeah. two, two little speakers And 100 watt amp Yeah and Probably no monitors oh. <laughs> You know so From that And and we We were lucky then When we started with the Saw Doctors We got to play Support to the Water Boys So that was our First mm. experience Of the Of a big, big PA Full production like, yeah. yeah 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 Big stages mm. It's a good yeah. band, though. It's a great live band. Mm. Yeah, but it was it was kind of luxurious compared to the first hundred gigs where, of course, with the hundred watt PA and yeah. the amps, uh, leads now working. Then. Yeah, yeah. sure. Start somewhere, like yeah. 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 But it was uh, it was amazing then, and then into the nineties, like PA's became like hi fi. Yeah, and the monitors were you you heard exactly what you wanted to hear and. Mm. It was very luxurious, really. Yeah. And now there's like... There's in-ears. Mm. What are your thoughts on in-ears? I wouldn't use them myself because no. I, I find... I have to hear the amp behind me. And if you don't hear the amp... Or if you if I was to put something in my ears, you, you cut a lot of the top end out of the amp. So I'd end up turning the top end up. Up. In the amp. Yeah, and then that's going out to the house then. And yeah. Yeah. I've it. Park has used ears. Yeah, I've used them. Yeah, and uh, a, f- a couple of times now in in uh, uh, less than ideal conditions, they they helped me a lot. Yeah, when those people having a chat and yeah, want to block them out. <laughs> GA gigs and things. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's the fun fact about in ears. Um, I think I said this in the last in the last episode with Brendan, or maybe. I don't know the live stream did with Brendan went down the stream went down three times <laughs> when we tried to do it live but we eventually got it but anyway um, yeah fun fact about in-ears we learned this in college that in-ears actually are the worst things you can ever put into your ears because you're putting the the driver of the speaker like directly up against your eardrum and so you're creating this like pressure you know this pressure is building up against your eardrum so they set like sonically they're class <laughs> But the, the, in the this, long run, it has to be the same problem for, for anybody using earphones. Then, isn't yeah, it? yeah. They say yeah. you shouldn't be using like these AirPods or anything. You shouldn't be using anything like that. You should just be using headphones. Like, 
Right. Yeah. It's it's mad though, because like, you never think of that. You know? And then you're wondering, like, how do all these musicians come out of all this these years of gigs and you're wondering <laughs> why they have hearing problems? Yeah, right? the tinnitus. Huh? Yeah. 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 You don't have tinnitus, do you? I do, yeah. Do Since you? Blaze X, yeah. Really? Yeah. I'd always be afraid I'd get that. Mm. Is it as bad those people make out? Like well, not, mine isn't that bad. Okay. Some people my cousin is uh is a really bad. You know, they're working on technology now that can replace the frequencies that you've lost. Oh. Yeah, they're able to, like, it's like going to be like a little injection that you get into your ear. <laughs> and it'll actually, um, what's the word? Sounds it's like, like rehabilitate these hairs because wow. the hairs, it's the hairs vibrating in your ears. Yeah. That create the, in your cochlea, there's it lined with all little hairs. And it's the hairs vibrating that pick up the different frequencies. You know what I mean? Wow. So once those hairs fall, that's those frequencies gone. But they're working on this like stimulant that will be able to put them back up again so you'll be able to hear all those frequencies again. Uh-huh. Let, them, yeah. let them solve COVID-19 first. First, now. yes, yeah. 100%. Um, but yeah, is there anything else you want to talk about before we play a few tunes? Nothing particularly. Anything that I missed? Any news at all from town? Anything that I missed? There's no one up town. No one up no. town. No. I've, I'm going to put my mask on again, so... <laughs> Two. Parik arrived. When Parik arrived at the house, he had a mask on him, and it said, "How yeah?" I thought it was absolutely. There it is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is my. This is my one that he, he gave me. <laughs> the Maiden Galway. These ones. Yeah, the Odd Sock Company of sell those. Oh, the Odd Sock crowd. Yeah. That's class. Yeah. Those... Did you see the plane? No. The plane that came over. You know the big plane that landed in Shannon. Oh yeah. The Antonov two two five. I think it was called. Is that what it was called? Jesus, that was a serious plane like that. It was like the size, it was the width of Crow Park. And drived into Shannon and it had enough PPE for 12 weeks. The biggest plane on Which the planet. Which was delivering stuff. Yeah. What? Yeah, delivered PPE. And it only had enough for 12 weeks. Oh. Imagine that. The biggest plane on the planet. Like. Oh, Crazy. Scary stuff. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know if I like the way this COVID is going. Is this live now? Yeah. Did you know that, Leo? No. Neither did I. It didn't bother me though. I didn't <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, yeah. Will we take a break? Yeah. We'll okay. Chill out and we can yeah. set up then for the performance. Yeah, so we'll talk to you after break. Good luck. Play by the ball. Live by the ball. Be the balls. Times are heavy right now. But we're here to lighten the mood every week with our brand new podcast, the B Team Subs Podcast. We're four young Irish lads who'll be chatting shy about the lighthearted bits of news you might have missed and riffing into them. We'll be bringing you sketches, some exciting guests, and some top class messages. We'd love your support, so make sure to hit that follow button, like, comment, and share with your friends to make sure you don't miss a thing. We are the B Team Subs Podcast. They lay in the seal at the summer holidays. They, you, know, you know when the, when you're a kid and summer is just lovely and warm like May was this year. I'm up bright and early in the promise of all it might be. The land the seal, the days, the days will flee. There's a mist in the morning, it's gonna be fine Bees and the birds and the butterflies fly da 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 These are the days we'll flee Well, there's nobody stolen Sound of the silence on me Barefoot and happy, I skip down the lane to the sea. I chase down the sand at the edge of the waves. I laugh at the way the big sea behaves. La da 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 Thunder, oh, I forget the words of this place. How does it call you? 
calling clashing waves Sound like tundle for fashionism is glitch And then I'm rolling to the shore All day long till tides are turning Think I've got time for just one more the bar up and away and I'm free there's nobody shouting nobody yelling at me I can fly like an angel run like the wind and imagine a world oh it's only pretend la da 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 to the days of the days we are free Sunshine is warm and the days are so long Summer won't end, it just goes on and on la da 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 These are the days we are free I'm sorry now about messing up in the middle, I've been... I haven't done anything for a while. Have you got a song, Leo? I don't know, have I at all? I wasn't thinking, really. Just a <laughs> you have too many of them, you have too many. I'll go on. <clears throat> oh, you have too many. Remember that one we did? Um, I forget what key it was in. Which? Uh, if I ever have another day... Lovely. What key is that? Is this a... D. D. Oh, you're close enough there. The manage? Yeah. Two. Oh, what? Two, three, four. One, two. Oh, what? Two, three, four. If I ever have another day, there's the day I had with you. Walked out from that summer school in Lewisburg Stood in silent awe at ocean sunset view Deeper into memory, deeper into blue If I never have another day Where's the day I had with you? Kicking leaves running through the night Didn't we on Stephen's Green? Feeling feelings that never felt so right Till you told me what they mean Deeper into memory Deeper into blue If I never have another day Where's the day I had with you? A half-watched hull and match in Donahoe's Sure we didn't care who'd win Bought a bag of chips and left them there We came home to Colfin Deeper into memory, deeper into blue If I never have another day There's the day I had with you Deeper into memory Deeper into blue I go 
do that again later. Friends forever, for a hundred years Could we make it twice that long? All the sacred music, all the songs All the love where that come from Deeper into memory, deeper into blue if I never have another day There's the day I had with you I think you'll nearly warmed up my play If I never have another day This the day I had with you The day we had in the podcast Out in Maui Maui Thank you, thank you, thank you. No. Can I want to? Can I? It's a studio. We can I? It's a studio. Studio jazz. I'm actually really crying. It's so cool to hear live music. That's it. I haven't heard live music in so long. I'm sitting here and I'm like, oh my God. He's going to cut that bit out, isn't he? I don't know. He wouldn't know them. He wouldn't know. (laughs) (laughs) Would you sing a song, Leo? I'd enjoy you singing a song. Sing one of them ones. Sing one after new album. I wouldn't remember Dude. any of them, though. It's been a while. The new album is actually better than the, other, the previous album. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> and I can say that because I had very little to do with it. <laughs> Frank Leeson, the dub from Clone Boo. As this saying, i share it with you When things are right to the level Can't get any better He says, I'm in my glannies I'm in my glannies I'm in my glannies When things are right to the level Can't get any better He says, I'm in my glannies I can ride my bike, I can do what I like When I'm in my glannies Cause I'm a hailum scaleum devil make hail When I'm in my glannies Most of the women I know nowadays are glannies So this one is for all the glannies Especially Glanny K And Mary Mary too Granny can always have something in her ladle But this COVID-19 is hitting her hard Poor old Granny, this one is for the Glannies Poor old Granny, rock and rolling Granny She's doing her yoga, she's well in her bling Virtual Camino, that one can do anything. She rides her bike, she can do what she likes. She's our Glenny, and she's a Hillum Scalum Devil May Kill. That's our Glenny. Play the Glenny music, Leo. Leo's never heard this song before, you know. He 
knows what my pot called for lesson stuff. I can ride my bike, I can do what I like When I'm in my glenny She's a hell, I'm scale, I'm devil, make hell I'm... That's all glenny, that's all podcast, thank you very much Thanks a million, Thank you, my pleasure